relationship between humans and wolves is an ancient one. Many of the first colonists to America brought it with them in their folklore. Little Red Riding Hood and biblical references to a wolf in sheep's clothing. Another favorite was the boy who cried wolf. These universal themes were the wisdom of the day in a world of real threat. They also portrayed wolves as untrustworthy and dangerous. Then in November of 1630, the Massachusetts Bay Colony was the first to offer a bounty for every wolf killed. These would be offered throughout our history, continuing as late as 1965 and offering up to $50 per wolf. Wolves were taken from their dens, trapped and hunted, poisoned, burned, and shot. Even prominent environmentalists encouraged the killing. It wasn't until the middle of the 20th century that science started to look at predators differently. In 1974, after nearly all wolves had been hunted to the brink of extinction, they were finally put on the endangered species list. The road to success for wolves has two parts, recovery and reintroduction. This means finding remaining wolves, breeding them, and then reintroducing them to the territories they once ruled. The most well-known of these endeavors was the Gray Wolves of Yellowstone in 1995. After eradicating gray wolves, the elk population in the park soared to 19,000 and began destroying the aspen trees, seen as a crucial food source and habitat. This had downstream effects on other species. For a time, the park managed the exploding elk populations with hunting and relocation, finally deciding to reintroduce wolves in the mid-90s. Several gray wolves from Canada were relocated to Yellowstone put in breeding pairs and released into the wild to rebalance nature. There are now about 6,000 gray wolves in the lower 48 states, with large populations in Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho, along with wolves being seen in Washington, Oregon, and California. Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin's populations have rebounded, and Colorado has just voted to return gray wolves to their state. The Mexican wolf is a subspecies of gray wolf. After near eradication, the U.S. worked closely with the Mexican government to reestablish populations in Arizona and New Mexico, returning this majestic animal to the American Southwest in 1998. Today, there are an estimated 163 in the wild, with over 300 in captive breeding programs. Like its cousin, the gray wolf, this animal has been successfully recovered and reintroduced. The red wolf was recovered in 1987. It has been determined to be its own species with the territory of the southeastern United States. In the late 1970s, the last remaining red wolves in the wild were captured in Texas and put in a captive breeding program, then the species was declared extinct in the wild. A reintroduction program was tried in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in the early 90s. While early indications were positive, it was determined that there was not enough prey in the park to support the wolves, whose tendency to wander on private land in search of food was concerning. This issue often arises with wolf reintroduction programs, and it's understandable why someone might be upset about real economic loss. Recovery programs work closely with the public to deal with incidents. Still, According to research, wolves are responsible for only about two-tenths of one percent of livestock death. Coyotes are thought to kill more livestock than wolves. Hunters are another group who have historically opposed wolf reintroduction, believing that wolves decimate herds of prey, including elk. It's clear that numbers are down in recent years, the exact intent of wolf reintroduction. According to wolf expert Doug Smith, Yellowstone wolves kill about 2,100 elk per year, while hunters in Wyoming killed almost 26,000. Personal safety can also be a concern, so what are the numbers? In the past century, in North America, there has been one fatal attack in rural Alaska, six known wolf attacks causing injury, and 21 attacks by wolves believed to have been fed by humans. The number one cause of death for red wolves in North Carolina is gunshots. Number two is motor vehicles. The red wolf in particular is often mistaken for a coyote, which is similar in size and coloring to the one pictured here, but typically causes most of the trouble. 
While much progress has been made with red wolves, there's still more to be done. The current red wolf recovery plan consists of three steps, species survival, island propagation, and reintroduction. Let's look at what's happening. The Species Survival Plan is about captive breeding in 43 zoos across the U.S. It was started at Point Defiance Zoo in Washington, and currently two zoos in Florida participate in Tampa and Tallahassee. There are currently 245 red wolves in zoos who have saved the red wolf from extinction. U.S. Fish and Wildlife has recently said they will be focusing more effort on this part of the program to ensure past progress is maintained into the future. The Island Propagation Program is conducted at St. Vincent National Wildlife Refuge near Apalachicola. After being bred in zoos, wolves are taken here, put into breeding pairs, and set free on the island with the goal of producing one litter per year. Once the litter is born, they remain to help next year's litter, considered good training for parenting in the wild. There is currently a breeding pair and three pups, totaling five wolves on the island. Next, they head to Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge in North Carolina, where they are acclimated, fitted with the radio collar, and released to the wild. There are currently thought to be 20 wolves in the wild here, down from 130 a few years ago. U.S. Fish and Wildlife has recently said they will only be using federal lands in the future to reduce human-wolf conflict in the area, giving the wolves a better chance at survival. One ongoing issue has been the red wolf's tendency to mate with coyotes, unlike the gray wolf who views them as a threat. This has thwarted reintroduction efforts in the past, making it difficult to define what a red wolf was until clear DNA processes and measurements define the differences between a red wolf, a coyote, and a hybrid. This has also meant the recovery program has had to undertake extensive management of the coyote population for the red wolf to be successful. Though red wolf recovery has been challenging, staff at the program are optimistic, saying the bald eagle and the American alligator were once endangered and now thrive. If anyone can bring back the red wolf, we can.